triggering an element or pop up to show when, say, a button is clicked is pretty straightforward, right? We add an element and set the link to open the pop up. Easy. But what if we wanted to take it a step further and have our button icon change when the pop up is opened and then change it back to the default state when the pop up is closed? Have I got you interested? In this video, we're going to look at how we can create a dynamic animated trigger for our elemental pop ups. Hey, I'm Ryan from Hello Hudson. Thank you so much for joining me. It has been such a long time since I've put together one of these tutorials and I'm so sorry. I really love sharing these videos with you and definitely plan to do them more. So if this is your first time, welcome. This channel is all about sharing tools and tips to help you build better and smarter websites. Please consider subscribing and hitting that bell so you're notified of new videos. If you've used Elementals pop-ups for anything on a website, you'll know that there are a bunch of great uses for them, including customer incentives, showing subscribe and contact forms, and even, dare I say, showing a full screen navigation. Now, before you go all Vecna on me, you have already lost. I know, I know, there are SEO considerations to make when it comes to displaying pertinent in-page links, such as your main navigation in a pop-up, rather than in your header. So please make sure you do your own research to consider if using a pop-up as your main menu is best for the website you're building. I'd recommend checking out Maxime's video if you'd like to understand this topic more. All that said, we're not here to discuss SEO or condone the use of pop-ups as full screen menus. We're here to discuss fun topics like CSS, jQuery, and using these tools to enhance our elemental websites and discover what is possible. So let's get started. The whole idea here is to use two small jQuery snippets that basically fire when either an elemental pop-up has been opened or it's been closed. When this occurs, we'll use these events to manipulate our button triggers by adding or removing a simple CSS class to the trigger, depending on the state of our pop-up. I'm going to show you two examples here. The first will be animating a CSS hamburger and the second an SVG icon in an elemental button. So let's dive in. So first up, let's start with our hamburger icon. Over here, I've got the same site with our same pop-ups, but just with a very simple icon used to trigger that pop-up. Same here, I've got the icon, but there's no animation happening. So we're gonna kick off with creating our CSS hamburger. And you can simply Google CSS hamburger menu to find your own. I found this one by SMN91, and it's very simple. This one will need a little bit of changing because it's currently set to change state on hover, where obviously we're gonna want it to change state when the pop-up is open. So we're gonna start with copying and pasting this HTML and putting it into our header. So I'm copying over here, so basically what we're gonna be doing is replacing this icon with some HTML. So let's go in and edit our elemental header. So in here we need to add some HTML. Now we could do this by using a HTML widget, but this isn't how I'm gonna do it. The reason for that is it's a little bit hacky, but when we add HTML to our page, we can't actually add an elemental pop-up as the link. So my way around this is by simply using an elemental header and adding our HTML in there. So if we paste that in there, as we can see here, we have our link. So we can begin by adding our pop-up as the link. And what we wanna do is make sure we set the action to toggle pop-up so that it can close and open. We will set our menu. Okay, so now obviously we're not seeing anything here, but what we can do is we can come and delete our icon here and we wanna set this to inline and then we're gonna be controlling how it looks using some CSS. So let's update our page. Go back and refresh the home page, and obviously there's nothing here currently to see, but that's soon gonna be fixed by adding some CSS. So for my CSS, I love using CSS Hero. It's a great tool to use. If you want to know more, check out the affiliate link in the comments. And if you purchase, thank you in advance because that's going to help me out a little bit. So in CSS Hero, this is where we're going to start to add the style of our hamburger icon. Let's go back and copy some of the CSS from our code pen here. 
After I add this in, I'm going to be adding a few tweaks to this, but you'll see how it comes together. Okay, let's paste in our CSS here and see what happens. So a couple of things, we want to get rid of this margin. I'm going to simplify our units by just using pixels. So some of the greatest things about using CSS Hero is that it allows us to write CSS as SAS. So some of these features include using variables. So for my transitions, I've created a timing variable and a duration variable. This allows me to use these variables throughout my code and make a global change if ever need be. So let's come down here and add our transition. We're gonna use our duration, set it to all, and we're gonna add in here our timing variable. Another nice feature of SAS is that it allows us to nest our classes within classes. So this just keeps things a whole lot neater and tidier. And I'm gonna make a few more little tweaks to this CSS here so it works for us. Okay, so what we wanna do now is set up our hover state for this hamburger menu. What I'm wanting to do is simply shift our top and bottom bars, let's say three pixels. So this one down by three, this one up by three. So to do that, we can use our nested hover state. Now, if you haven't used SAS or less CSS before, I'd suggest you go check it out because it really is a great time saver. So let's quickly just jump through how this is gonna look when we hover over our hamburger. So now that we have our hover state, we wanna set up how we want our hamburger to look when our menu is open. And we're gonna achieve that by adding the class menu active when our pop-up has been opened. So we're gonna again come in here and nest our class called menu active. Now this class will be added to our hamburger menu element. So what we wanna do is create our close icon. So I'm gonna quickly go in here and add some CSS to do that. Now that we've got that CSS added, we can test this actually by simply removing this class. So that'll append all of this CSS to that without actually having this class active. So if I remove this, we'll see that our hamburger is indeed becoming a cross. It's just a little bit out of whack. So let's just fix that up. There we go, it was simply that. Okay, so let's add back our menu active and save our CSS. So if we come back to our homepage here, we can refresh and we should see our hamburger, which we can click now, but obviously our menu active class isn't yet being appended. So to do that, we need to add some jQuery. Now to add the jQuery, I always add this to my child theme, but feel free to use your theme or a plugin, whatever works for you. Let's go into our dashboard, come down here to theme file editor, find our JavaScript file, and this is where we're gonna be adding our jQuery. So let's head back to our Elementor events page and copy in our jQuery. Now this one is a bit of a simplified one. It doesn't actually have any variables in here. And to achieve what we're wanting to do, we're actually gonna need this ID here, which is the pop-up ID. So the first thing we wanna do here is when our pop-up, which is our main menu, is shown, we wanna add a class to our hamburger. Now, if you've got multiple pop-ups happening on your page, which we will by the time we're done, we're actually needing to differentiate between the pop-ups. So that's where these additional variables come in handy because we're gonna target our pop-up by its ID. As you can see, this middle variable is the pop-up ID. So I'm gonna actually start with this one and we'll just change hide to be show. So copy that, come back to our theme and we're gonna paste this in here. Now, depending on how your theme is set up or whatever plugin you're using, you might need to leave this as jQuery. In my case, I know that I need to actually change this to use the dollar sign instance for jQuery. So first off, let's go and find the ID of our pop-up. Now to do this, we come in here and we go and edit our pop-up. And the ID is simply the post ID here. So we can see that it is 353 in my case. And you find out what yours is. Come back to our theme. I'm gonna change this to 353. And let's not forget to change this firstly to show. And so when a pop-up is shown and it equals the ID 353, 
we're going to add our class to our hamburger. And to do that, we're going to simply use some jQuery. Remembering if your instance of jQuery is using the jQuery name, then make sure that you replace dollar signs with that. For me, so we can target our hamburger menu. Go add class. I'm going to add our menu active class there. Secondly, when our pop-up is hidden, we want to again target the same ID but remove the class. So let's go and copy this on hide and change this to remove class. Update your JavaScript file, head back to your home page and refresh. And our class is being added. So we've got our close icon which we can click and close. Now the beauty of this approach is because our script knows whether the pop-up is open or closed, even if we don't close our pop-up using our trigger and we click somewhere else that might be set to, to close our pop-up, it still will remove our class from our hamburger. So it's always gonna stay in sync with what's happening with that pop-up. Okay, so for our second example, let's look at doing a similar thing, but with a customized SVG icon. To achieve this, we're gonna start by grabbing our icon and dropping it into Figma so we can add a few layers that allow us to change how our icon looks when our pop-up is opened and our class is added. So let's head over to Figma, drop in our icon. And all I'm gonna do is create our own close symbol so that we can display that when the pop-up is open and then have our default state show as it is. First off, I'm gonna put all these layers that are currently there in its own group and give it the ID chat. And I'm gonna simply resize this whole thing so that when we add in our stroke, it's gonna be proportionate in size. So from here, let's speed through and add our lines to make a closed symbol. This isn't a Figma lesson, so let's jump through to the fun stuff. Okay, last thing I wanna do is just change everything here to be white. So it displays nicely on our dark button. From there, let's come down and export our SVG and then open that in our text editor. The reason we do this is so that we can group our different icons. So to do that, we simply need to add a few lines of code here. So G for group, and then we're gonna add in an ID equals chat. So I know from the layers that we had in Figma that all of these paths here are to do with our chat icon. So I'm gonna come in here and close my group. And then at the two lines that we've added here, are our close icon. And just for those who are a little bit OCD, let's add some indentation to our file. So now we can save that and we can go and replace the icon we have in our button. Let's go in and edit the page with Elementor. And once in here, let's click on our button and upload our new icon. And as we can see, our icon here has the cross over the top, which we're gonna use our CSS to fix that. And lastly, because we need a way to target our button when the pop-up is being opened or closed, we need to add in a custom class. I've already done this because I've added some custom styles to my button, but make sure you have something here that you can use. So chat button is what we will be using. Let's update our page and head back to CSS Hero and begin to add some of our custom CSS. If you already have it open, make sure you refresh so you can see your new icon. I'm just gonna go to the navigate mode. Now, because I've already added some custom CSS for my chat button, I'm just gonna expand on this. So we're gonna start with targeting our chat and close IDs within our SVG. So right off the bat, if I come in here and change the opacity of our close to zero, we'll see that it disappears over here. So that's how we want our default to look. But I'm just going to add a little bit more CSS to make this look a little nicer. So the class we're going to be appending to our chat button when our pop-up is active is called contact pop-up active and quickly add in the relevant CSS. Okay, so lastly, we can now come in and add our class back here just to check it. Come back down here and save. And then obviously the last thing we need to do, 
We can refresh there and we can see that our icon is showing the way it should, but we need to come back into our jQuery and add in our show and hide events. So quickly, let's go in and edit our contact us pop-up to find out what the ID is. And we can see here that it's 411. So we could come in and simply duplicate these, but what I'm gonna do is just add in an additional if command just to minimize our code. So I'm gonna copy and paste this, paste it down here, change in our ID to 411. Again, down here. Change that to 411 as well. So we're gonna change this to chat button and the class we're adding is contact pop-up active. And we can copy and paste those down here. And let's update, refresh our page and give it a go. How good does that look? I'd love to hear your thoughts about how you might make use of this little snippet. Let your creativity run wild. So leave a comment and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Thanks again for joining me and I'll see you in the next video.